So do you buy a Harley Davidson Ultra Classic or you spend half as much to buy this thing that does everything just as good if not better? Cue the intro. What's up guys, Sean here from SRK Cycles. This is a 2014 Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager. It's a beautiful bike. How many miles are on it? 8,500 miles. Now this, uh, this new model came out in 2009 and it's been running I think they're still they still not they still might be running it they may have just stopped it's a v-twin water-cooled six-speed transmission 1700 it's an awesome bike it makes a great power and it looks good it also features Kawasaki's K act which is their their ABS that they put in their bikes front brakes feel nice not feeling any pulsating these things accelerate good the shifting is very precise uh, it's kind of like the same way I felt when I you know, drive like a victory. It's very like, you know, it's like a, like a hammer hitting the anvil. Ching, ching, you know. It's a very precise, very fulfilling shift. Sometimes you get to jump on a bike and it feels real, a, little, a little too soft and you don't, you're in my end, yeah, you know, you're in. But yeah, Kawasaki did a good job making this thing just feel really, really nimble. And of course, six speed is the overdrive. All right, guys, let's do the words of wisdom. James 4, 17, therefore, to the one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. That's a question uh, I'm sure a lot of us have, you know what I mean? What is it, the sin of omission kind of thing? So this, in, in the 1700 Kawasaki Vulcan line, it comes in three different models. The Nomad, which would be closest to the, uh, like the Road King, the Vaquero, which would be closest to the Street Glide. So the Nomad has no front fairing, no lowers. It's got bags, but no tour pack. The Vaquero, this doesn't have a tour pack, has lowers and the upper fairing. And then you got the, the big bad, the, uh, the, the Voyager, which just has everything you could possibly think of. It's got great power. It's got plenty of power to pass. If you want to go the speed limit or the speed limit plus, it's got it. It's going to be able to do it. This is an amazing, amazing machine for cruising the highway. One of the coolest features about one of these bikes, if you are doing a lot of highway cruising and you're trying to keep a consistent speed, which is hard to do. A lot of times you end up going, you know, too slow or too fast or trying to keep up with traffic. It's nice you can throw on the uh, turn cruise control on, set it, bam. What's cool about it is if I press anything, watch this. I press the, I press the brake pedal on my foot it turned it off. I bet you if I press the clutch, if I press the clutch, it turns it off. If I press anything, it turns that off. You never, there's never gonna be in a situation where even a moment where you like, oh watch this, hold on. If I roll the throttle back, it turns it off. You touch, you pretty much, you know, do any movement you, that shows the bike that you wanna go or stop, it's gonna turn that cruise control off. So you don't have, it, it, with situations where you're like, oh, gotta turn it off real quick, you don't have a moment to spare. It's right there. It's turned off for you. It's awesome. So uh, the Vulcan Voyager has these bags, and this is actually how they made Harley Davidson started making their bags similar to this, where they open up with a lever inside and opens up like that. It's the easiest way to do it, and the, the lid's not going to fall off, and then you just clip them back on there. Tour pack, actually very similar to the way Harley does it. Just pop that open. It's got plenty of space. You see a lot of space in here. Now I'm sure you can get different sizes. I'm positive you can get different sizes winch. I think this is the stock one. Um, the one that comes on the uh, Vaquero is going to be a little bit shorter. I prefer a shorter windshield. I don't need to have to look through the windshield. This one's per this one's in great shape. It's nice and clean. It's not an issue. But I like to have wind hitting my face. This this windshield blocks everything. I mean, you could be wearing a helmet. You could be, you could be wearing a baseball hat with the bill forward, and it's still going to stay on your head, which some guys do. I'm not sure why they do that. You, it's proper. You better wear a helmet. The Voyager is featuring his and her floating floorboards. You say floating because it actually, the rubber piece is kind of floating on the metal to absorb most of the vibration. This bike has the stock pipes on. It's got a great sound to it. It's not crazy loud. It's not crazy quiet. Probably when you're hitting highway speeds, mostly what you're gonna hear is gonna be the wind. But we'll see. Let's jump on the highway, see what we can do with the zero to 60 in. Right there. It gets up there pretty quick. And then by the time you throw it in the overdrive, it's, it's cruising, it's relaxing. 
And even though this thing weighs about 900 pounds uh, wet with all, with all the fuel in it, it still feels like a pretty light and nimble bike when you're riding it. We'll show you that on the, we'll show you that on the test drive. All right, so one of the first things you'll notice when you jump on one of these bikes is just how incredibly not heavy it feels the second you start moving. I mean, it doesn't even feel that heavy while you're, while you're standing still compared to a lot of bikes. I, the heaviest bike I've ever moved was a Harley Davidson Deuce, and I don't know why, they just feel so heavy. You need three guys to lift it off the kickstand. I don't know why they feel so heavy. The ergonomics of the bike are kind of what you would uh, expect from an uh, American cruiser, where your knees are you know, about out of 45. Your feet are in front of you. Most of your weight is on your butt, and you just kind of rest your hands right on the... Uh, right on the handlebars, very, very comfortable. These lowers have vents that you can open them up and close them. Right now, uh, they're both open, so you can feel that, that wind. That, that's a big deal. Um, when, you're, when you're cruising on a hot summer day, you don't wanna have to take off these fairings to, to get some air hitting your vents, hitting your calves. It's nice, you can just open up the vent. It takes you one second to do it. But in the winter time, when, you, when you're really happy that there's, you know, a. Uh, a fairing blocking the wind from hitting your shins that's cold cold air hitting your shins you, all you have to do is close the vent so uh, this thing has a lot of cool stuff you got your cruise control equipment right here you got your a b mode you got your volume tune squelch for your uh for your cb system everything's right here nice accessible there's also a uh, power port down here two little locked cubbies now this cubby right here has got some wires that connect to the uh, to the radio. You can buy from Kawasaki or maybe aftermarket a connection that you can connect your uh, your phone in there and then you can actually control the, the phone with the buttons up here so you can listen to all your you know Pandora or whatever or YouTube while you're driving. It's a real cool retro classic look that's really not gonna it's not gonna go out of style because of the style came about in, in the you know the 40s. I really like it. it's nice and simple. And there's also a lot of cool aftermarket stuff you can do to step up the uh, you know bigger amps for the radio, but you can keep this same looking face. I've seen a lot of people spend a lot of money and make these stereos awesome, but I think from the factory they actually sound pretty great. All right, so I'm averaging 38 miles per gallon, which is pretty pretty impressive. Not sure how big the fuel tank is. I should know that. You got all the all the important gauges right here from temp to fuel, speedometer, tachometer. Nice, it's easy to read. It's right where you want it to be. It's not like down at the tank where you have to look down, you just see it right there. And also the, uh, the reading for the radio is also very big, very easy to read. You have radio buttons here, you don't need to use them. You can use all the radio buttons you can use are right up here. No name is more turn the volume more up, and turn the volume down. You can change your source. It's all nice and, it's all pretty simple and user friendly. Sometimes when you get a bike, you don't want to have to read the manual to figure everything out. This is, this is very simple. There's no one specific thing that really sets this bike out, you know, amongst, you know, better than any other bike. It just does everything extremely well. And then when you figure out how much it costs, I think we have this bike listed for 8,900 bucks. So you have a 2014 with less than 10,000 miles on it for sale for 8,900 bucks. If you compare that to what you're going to get for a Harley or an Indian, it's insane. I mean, this is probably half half the price of that. And it's it's beautiful, they're reliable. I mean, there's really no downside to it. With a gold wing, you don't feel anything. You don't even notice the bike is on. With this, you know the bike is on. It's just a nice, cool, subtle uh, V-twin. You know what I mean? It feels great. You're, and this is what a lot of people like. This is why a lot of people don't like other bikes. They're, they, they, when they want to ride, they want that. They want that visceral feeling, you know what I mean? Of riding a V-twin, of riding a motorcycle, that's kind of part of why you, why you do it. It's like driving a big truck, a big loud diesel truck, you know what I mean? It's that, it's that, that hum that calms you down. The question is, does this thing really stand up to the Harley-Davidson Ultra Classic? It's got a great sound to it. It's got a good feel. It's a very easy bike to ride. If I had one of these for too much longer, I would, I would have to put like, like knee pucks on the bottom of the uh, engine crash guards because it just feels like it wants to get so low and you just feel so comfortable getting low on it. Turns cruise control off. I've had a bunch of these bikes. The only issue I've ever had with any of them was a battery. I had to put a new battery in it. The battery is very accessible. You pop the seat up. It's a big giant battery for a big bike with a lot of electronics and they're actually, they're, they're, they're not that expensive. 
Guys, go to srkcycles.com, check out this bike and a bunch of other bikes. We ship bikes all over the country. Our prices are insane. And don't forget, it's not what you're riding, but where are you going? We'll see you guys later.